Welcome back to F-Zero GP Legend. It's, we're about 10 videos in and we're finally going to play the game mode that is in the title of the game. That is Grand Prix mode. First up is the Bronze Cup. And I'm going to be playing this on expert difficulty because, as I may have mentioned before, there is no master mode. And you uh, haven't seen this screen in a while, it's the machine setting screen. Ah, that's the name of this course, Tradition Park. I keep getting Tradition Park confused with Expansion Park, Three, which is a later two, course. One, go. Anyways, uh, the, the Machine Settings screen only gets used in Grand Prix mode and Time Trial mode. In every other game mode, I'm pretty sure they just have a preset setting for you to use. Maybe that's the idea behind the whole malfunctioning machine thing over in Jack Levin's story. Or that was just a fake out. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. The machine I'm going to be using for the Bronze Cup is the Night Thunder, which you've already seen back in F-Zero X. In fact, come to think of it, I used Silver Nielsen in every game he's been in so far. I used him in F-Zero X, I used him in GX, but that was a custom machine, but it still counts. So I suppose I'll have to make a note to myself, use Silver Nielsen in F-Zero Climax when you get there. He is a nice character anyways. Anyways, the Night Thunder in this game, it has decent body and very nice boost. Its grip is what kind of kills it though, because it's very slippery. I suppose you should expect that from an E-Rank grip, but... So as for this course, the only real difference between Tradition Park 1 and Tradition Park 2 was that little piece of course I just went through right before the pit area and the finish line. Overall, it's, um... I suppose you could say they were trying to throw back to Mute City 1 without outright copying Mute City 1. It's kind of the vibe I'm getting here, and that mistake right there costed me the first place victory. The computer Wonderful. actually caught up. I've been complaining about the low difficulty AI this entire time, but it got me that time. Spoiler alert, that's the only second place win in the entire run of this Grand Prix. The rest are all first place wins. At least I gave them a chance, right? Red Canyon Junction 2 is up next. Three, two, ready, uh, Like with Tradition Park, there's not a whole lot of difference between Junction 2 and Junction 1. The computer does force me to take the other, take the left path instead of the right path. And I will say that the path that I just went through is much wider in Junction 1. In Junction 2, it's much more narrow. Also in Junction 1, there would have been a little hole in the path split in case you wanted to get back onto the part of the course that has the dash blades. Like I'll point it out again when it comes up. Also pretty sure that pit area was wider. And this part of the course was also not there in Junction 1, but overall, they didn't change it completely. Like, I'm not getting the feeling that the course is an entirely different new challenge from what it was back in standard mode. Although, when the pit areas are narrow like that, it is hard to keep the Night Thunder on them, because it is pretty slippery. It's also hard to cut corners in places when you want to use the boost to get over the dirty area. That would hurt you in time attack. Final lap. Still not really getting the whole idea behind changing the course entirely on expert mode. Instead of just working to improve the AI. I mean, they're tailing me pretty nicely here because you can see that marker right there. Congratulations! But I'm pretty sure the way that works is like they're always like right behind you. you first place. And I suppose that was the case in Super Nintendo F Zero, but I do mean right behind you now. Like on Expert, if you hit a wall once, they're going to pass you. Not that it's difficult to pass them up again. I suppose I should stop complaining and just enjoy this. 
Because it really hurts the commentary when you just complain about how Three, Game A isn't two, as good as Game ready, B. Go. I do like the, that the computers are able to rocket start pretty nicely. Anyways, this is Clip Oval 2. It's not a whole lot different from Clip Oval 1. Though I am a little annoyed that I have to deal with Miss Flow's um, reduced visibility. Uh, that dirt area is not there in Clip Oval 1. I know that. I think... I think it wasn't anyways. The annoying thing about Mist Flow Clip Oval is that... Um... It takes about 30 seconds to complete one lap. And that means that the total time for the race is about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Which is about as long as a race would last in maximum velocity. As I said, this goes back to my usual complaining about I like the three lap format better than the five lap format, etc., etc. I do be believe that jump is a bit longer than it was in Clip Oval 1, and also Clip Oval 2 kind of splits the path right after the jump, sort of. Y you see what I mean. All it really means is that you can't get both dash blades. You well, unless you're really good. It would probably take more effort than it's worth to get both dash plates in that area. Okay, let me double check. No, actually, you could get both dash plates if you wanted to. Of course, it does mean that going right at that junction is a very bad idea, because there's no dash plate there at all. Okay, I will give that machine credit for passing me up, but then again, I wasn't boosting. I, um, actually, I did off-screen attempt the gold cup, which is which we're not doing yet, but I did try to do the gold cup without even boosting at all, and that was actually a fair challenge, but if I tried that, I mean, let's see, I actually try and play the game without boosting, it'd be completely boring. Even more so. So no, I won't do that. And while I suppose it is... You know, I'm going off the chain here again, but... I suppose while it is interesting to attempt to play a game without one of its core mechanics... Uh, that if you do that, you're playing the game without one of its core mechanics, and that can sort of lessen how fun the game is, instead of... Uh, I guess it would increase the challenge, but then it'd be less fun. Not exactly the best trade-off. Getting back on topic, here's Lightning Volute 2, and I like what they did here. Volute 2 is way different from Volute 1. Like, like um, right at, even after you get past the fact that you're going in the opposite direction than you were in the original race. And I finally managed to destroy a machine. Well, I finally bothered to destroy a machine. You don't really need to destroy the machines in this game. Unless you like have actually have trouble passing them. Now coming up right here is one of the one of Volute 2's most annoying quirks. Now you saw that there was a magnet zone right underneath uh, my jump. And I sort of passed it by going over the part of the course where there is no magnet zone. Now, if I didn't avoid the magnet zone. Um, there's actually a good chance I would be pulled into the space in between the courses and die. I would be pulled into the space in between those parts of track, I mean. And then I would fall, of course, and die. It's really an annoying thing. And I get that it means you should um, either boost to avoid that, or use a machine with a better jump, or just avoid going over the magnet zone at all, but then, you know, I don't like um, playing a course if it's going to force me to move in a specific way. That's why I don't like um, the things like, um, that's why people don't like things like Kaizo Mario World. You can't make your own strategy. You have to move exactly the way the game wants you to in situations like that. Also, that machine did not die in one hit to a side attack, so I suppose during those destruction missions in story mode, the, the machines really 
were programmed to die in one hit. Not cool. Also, I'm trying to find filler because this course lasts about three minutes. Two laps to go. Because every lap takes about 40 seconds. I think that's one of the longest courses in the game now that I think about it. Oh, I didn't notice, but if you if you go back and look, you will actually see that one of the machines succumbed to the problem I was just telling you about with the jump and everything. Because I've only destroyed one machine, and there's only 28 of them left in the race. Come to think of it, you know, 30 racers, and I haven't even fallen below 10th place at even one time. For this game, it just feels like 30 is a bit excessive. Like, it's not... a horrible amount. But, you know, you're never going to fall below 10th or so, so why have 30 racers is the question I am asking. I think it gets... well, actually, I know. It gets lower to 24 racers in Climax, which is a little nicer. I should also mention that there are a couple of shortcuts you can take in the wallet too, but the, but um, do the magnet zones and everything that requires both a high jump and some like TAS maneuvers, basically. So yeah, don't attempt those during a Grand Prix run. <laughs> We're ending this on a Firefield course. It's Blast Track Two, which we saw in Zero Test, I think. The mini-map, uh, Three, two, basically one, tells you what's go. different about this course. There's a little... They basically lengthened the course. Yeah. Uh, let's see how many, uh, racers we can send into the minefields this time. Configuration of the mines is a little different here. You actually have to make effort to avoid them now. Of course, um, you know us pro racers, we like to use the mines to get a speed boost. Well, outside of Grand Prix mode anyways. Three to go. Trying to think of what I think of this rendition of the Firefield theme, it's less epic than the, than the SNES versions was, and, ha, somebody died. Pretty sure it was the little wyvern who was right behind me. That's what his machine was called. I saw him hit a bunch of mines. Of course, I'm probably going to hit a bunch of mines now. Oh, wow, did you see that machine just fly past me? computer must be getting unlucky with the mines. Anyways, I was talking about the music a little earlier. Um, this course is that I can actually finish this course before the music loops. Which means that Firefield's theme is kind of wasted on this course. It's not a huge deal, but, you know... I don't like it when a song gets wasted. So we're only seven points short of a perfect 500, but that's okay. A win is still a win. Of course, there's no uh, character interviews or character endings, aside from showing you the credits if you beat Expert Mode, which I've cut out, because by this point I'd have seen the credits like eight or nine times from finishing all the story modes and stuff. Anyways, one thing that I do like is that if you complete the game on Expert Mode, you unlock not only the machine you got for beating Expert, but also the machines you would have gotten for beating Standard and Novice, so you don't have to play those. But you don't unlock the Standard Courses for Time Trial Mode if you just play on Expert. You only get the Expert Courses, so... Next up is the Silver Cup, and I will see you for that later.